What on earth are you doing now, Daddy? I'm going to be turning an ash bowl using some new tools and a new lathe from Record Power. It's always exciting uh, when I get new tools to try. And I'm particularly excited about these ones because I was part of the uh, sort of consultation and design team behind them. Um, they're from Record Power and then they're new high quality made in England lathe tools. So this is a three piece bowl turning set. And a three piece spindle set. And uh, yeah, Peter Webb from Record Power came down last year and spent the day with me and we put the prototypes through their paces and um, had a go with them. So it was really nice to get these pre-production uh, packets through. Um, they are looking good. So we'll have a go with these in a minute. No point in showing your tools unless we're going to use them. So we'll start with one of my most used lathe tools, which is a 3 8 bowl gouge. And it even says bowl gouge on it. It's got a little label for those who are new to the uh, hobby and uh, learning to recognise the different tools. And it's got a lovely um, anodised green uh, ferrule on there, record power colours. Uh, let's uh, pull the uh, protective cover off and have a look. It's got a nice heavy duty uh, shaft to it. Quite a deep V on that one and it's a traditional grind which you could change if you wanted to. Next is a 3 16 parting tool. I like the handles on these, nice and simple, good diameter. Next up, round nose scraper. It's got a nice uh, thickness actually to that. It's quite a small head on this which would be really good for um, you know, smaller projects and things uh, but it's got a good thickness to it. Then we're on to the spindle set. This I really like the look of. This is a uh, spindle roughing gauge and it's a hefty one. It is a one inch roughing gauge. Then we have a 3 8 spindle gauge all labelled again and uh, that's got traditional grind on that one which you can keep or change up to you. Nice profile to that. And we have another parting tool. This one is a 1 8 parting tool. I'm also awaiting the delivery of a very large package coming from Record Power. They said if you want to try out our new tools why not borrow one of our new top of the range lathes to try them on. So it's on its way the Record Power Coronet Regent which has got a massive 18 inch swing and a two horsepower motor so very excited waiting for that. When that arrives we'll set it up and get it running. This here look at it, this arrived, look at the size of that. So here's a quick time lapse of me setting it up. It came beautifully packaged on this uh, pallet with brackets holding everything in place. And the beauty of this lathe is that it all comes completely to pieces, which means you can do it almost single-handed, putting it back together. Just putting on the heavy-duty feet, and then putting it the right way up, waxing the top. Needed a bit of help just carrying the headstock through. But yeah, because it all comes apart, it does uh, mean that the individual pieces are manageable. So here it is in all its glory, all set up. So we'll move round. There we go. A Coronet Regent lathe from uh, Record Power. Lovely um, castings on this, beautiful quality castings. We'll start at the headstock. Here we've got an outrigger for if you rotate the uh, headstock 90 degrees so you're turning off the side of the lathe. And uh, if we um, undo that, that swings round. 
Yeah, multi-positional. It's got an elbow. There's a bowl uh, turning rest on there at the moment. Uh, the lathe comes with this 12-inch uh, rest. There's the banjo. Lovely long banjo on that, actually. Yeah, very stable as well. There's the control box, which uh, is magnetic and can be moved. Got your forward, reverse, stop, start, speed, and there's a direct uh, speed read out there, which gives you the actual real-time speed of the spindle. There's the motor, two horsepower motor. In here, we've got three pulleys giving uh, sort of three gear ratios or three speed ranges. That's uh, your index lock for indexing. Uh, that just locks the spindle. Um, it comes supplied with a faceplate, spur drive, lovely quality ground bed. Going along here, I've fitted the bed extension and that's really nice to fit. It's got little grub screws so you can actually adjust it so it's absolutely flush. Coming along to the end is the tailstock. Very smooth running. 90 millimeters quill travel on that. Nice live center as well. I like the design of that one. All lines up perfectly with the drive. Bed extension's a really good idea, I think. Uh, even if you don't intend turning long, long spindles. So just so, just gives you somewhere to slide the headstock out of the way. The inverter for the motor's under there. Adjustable feet. The other advantage of having these add-on features such as the uh, this outrigger for doing bowl turning and um, the lathe bed extension is uh, that they do add a lot of extra weight to the lathe and weight is a good thing when you're wood turning. The heavier the lathe the better. Well for what I've got in mind we're going to use the 100mm dovetail and deep gripper jaws. I need to install a thread adapter insert here as well um, to convert this to M33, which is what the lathe is. So just tightening up the thread adapter with a special wrench and using a little grub screw just to hold it in place. Attaching those chuck jaws. Here I'm finding centre of this lovely piece of ash using my faceplate jig to keep the uh, faceplate central while I fit it. And this is the faceplate that came with the lathe. Just taking the SC4 chuck off and then putting the uh, the faceplate onto the region. All very simple. And I'm starting turning here. I'm using the 3 8 bowl gouge. I have um, reground it slightly to give it a bit of a fingernail profile. It's very um, dry. This is kiln dried ash. This, so you you have to be very careful turning it. But this uh, tool did the job fantastically. Again, some beautiful clean cuts there, as you can see by the shine. You really want to avoid tear out with ash, yeah, especially this uh, very dry. Um, ash like this very easy to get tear out keep your tools sharp at all times obviously and take your time with the cuts get some nice push cuts going on here and as you shape the bowl it also brings it to round as well I'd cut it out roughly to round on the bandsaw but it was still a bit wonky It's always good to uh, when you're shaping these bowls you know each cut practice getting a nice finishing cut here what I'm doing is just trying to improve the profile a little bit I'm not putting a foot as such on this bowl just doing a push cut across the base just to true it up and get a flat surface ready for me chuck Finalising the shape. But uh, yeah, this uh, new bowl gouge performed fantastically. 
As I say, you can see the shine on the cut there. Just marking out the base, ready for the recess, for the chuck. Using the new parting tool, the record power parting tool. Just nibbling away there to make a recess for the chuck jaws. Work perfectly, as you'd expect. Then I'm just using a skew as a scraper just to uh, create a dovetail. Bit of sanding, I think I sanded this up to 600. Then it's taking the faceplate off. And then remounting the bowl onto the uh, SC4 chuck with the 100mm jaws on it. And expanding those into the recess. Then it's back with the bowl gouge. Truing up the edge and then doing a bit of hollowing. Just taking me time. Hogging out some of that uh, that middle there. Got a few issues with the camera. I was uh, using my phone to film some of this and I was controlling it with my Apple Watch and uh, I don't know what was going on but it kept zooming in and out. <laughs> I switched to um, my other camera in the end. but uh, So sorry if it's zooming in and out randomly. I don't quite know why it was doing that. Perhaps the chippings were getting on the phone. Bit of slow mo, got to have a bit of slow mo. Yeah, managed to get that right at the camera. Chasing along the bottom there, getting the side to the correct thickness. Yeah, extra slow mo, bonus feature. But the new bowl gouge performed very well. Just neatening that up, getting it to the profile I want. Very happy with that. Getting rid of the nub. Here I'm using the bowl um, rest that came with the outrigger to get in close to using the new scraper, the round nose scraper. Then there's a bit of sanding up to 600 again. Got a good finish off the tool, so it's quite an easy sand. Chestnut Products Food Safe Finish. I ended up putting several coats of this on, about three coats. Doing a bit of wet sanding with the uh, food safe finish, but it's 600 grit. And that brings it up absolutely beautiful. And it's off the SC4 chuck, and then I've reversed the bowl just to turn away the uh, chuck recess. Using the 3 outs bowl gouge to do this. And then a little bit of sanding. Sanding and branding. Just putting my mark on there. Then there was just a little bit of finishing and oiling. Please subscribe. That's it. Job done. The end of another project. Nice uh, salad bowl or um, fruit bowl. 12 inch diameter, um, about three inches deep. And uh, that's ash, uh, what some people call olive ash because of the colour of it. I think it's just dark coloured ash really. Uh, it's a very dry bowl blank and you have to be quite particular with ash when you're turning it. Um, not to get tear out and I managed to do that. Yeah it's made all the more enjoyable turning this because it was all done on this uh, new lathe which I'm trying out and that's the uh, Coronet Regent from Record Power. Yeah, lovely, really lovely, very quiet and powerful lathe. Really enjoyed using that. I turned this using traditional tools and they were the three new ones from Record Power, the new uh, high quality made in England HSS tools. So there's a bowl gouge parting tool and uh, a round nose scraper. And that's what I turned this with. So yeah, good result. Really pleased with these, worked beautifully. 
I've made this bowl for my next door neighbours, Gary and Louisa. It's a gift for them for being such good neighbours. It's been a difficult time for all of us over the past few weeks with lockdown and they've just been fantastic. So thanks a lot, Gary and Lou, this is for you. Thanks once again, everyone, for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up, it all helps me. And I'll be back soon with some more videos. Once again, many thanks, folks, for watching. I really appreciate all you people who have taken the time to watch my videos and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It costs nothing to subscribe. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when I put up new videos. Please like, share and subscribe. My daddy needs all the help he can get. More rubbish coming soon. Please subscribe.